Um, so this is key area four, which is mutations. So we're still in unit one. Um, and this section is just going to be focusing on gene mutations, also known as point mutations. OK. OK, so in terms of what you should know from National 5, most of the stuff came up within the evolution topic. So we learned the idea that mutations are completely random changes to genetic material. There's no kind of sense behind them. Uh, they can be helpful, they can be harmful, or they can be pretty neutral, being neither helpful or harmful. Uh, they are the only source, so mutations are the only source of new alleles. If you forgot what an allele is, go back and find that out. Uh, and mutagenic factors can increase the chance of mutations happening. So things like different types of radiation, different chemicals, things like UV rays, mustard gas, those kind of things can all increase the likelihood of a mutation occurring. OK, so an important definition that you need to be aware of is a mutation is a random change to DNA that can cause a wrong protein to be produced or possibly no protein at all. So we're just expanding on that idea of the National Five, a random change to DNA, and we're linking it to this idea of gene expression producing a protein. DNA controls the order of amino acids in a protein. So the idea is if the DNA is different, the protein can be different. And this idea of serious mutations, so big mutations, can often result in the death of the organism before they can actually reproduce. It, it causes effects like um, such bad health effects that they struggle to reach puberty or they are born infertile because their mutations are so severe. Uh, so often the mutation is not passed on. So what we find with really big mutations is they tend to be spontaneous. They tend to be the ones that have mutated inside that organism. They're not passed on through sperm and eggs. Instead, what's happened is something during the formation of the embryo has gone wrong. OK, so this idea of mutations, they can be helpful, they can be harmful, but serious mutations tend to result in the death of organisms. OK, so we're going to be looking firstly at single gene mutations, which are uh, caused by point, things called point mutations. And there are three main examples that we are going to look at. They are insertion, deletion and substitution. And pretty much they are self-explanatory in their name, which is quite nice. Yeah, this little gift from the Amoeba Sisters, you can see it shows it quite clearly. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to run through all three features of them. So an insertion mutation causes an extra nucleotide to be inserted in a DNA strand. So if we look at the top strand there, starting ACT, the idea is that is what the strand should normally look like. And during DNA replication, that is what the strand should copy. In an insertion mutation, accidentally, uh, DNA polymerase is going to put in an extra nucleotide in that strand, and that causes an effect that we can see later. Now, it's a useful or good idea to have examples of point mutation um, diseases. The reason for this is I've once or twice seen that you need to know examples of diseases. The most popular one that they ask about is sickle cell anemia, um, but it's useful to have an idea of how mutations can affect an organism. So. This example is an example of an insertion, uh, a disease caused by a point mutation that is an insertion. Uh, so it's Tay-Sachs disease and it's a condition that's fatal in all young children that are born with it so far. The most common cause of this condition is the insertion of not one nucleotide, but four nucleotides. So this sequence TATC goes into one particular gene on a chromosome. And as a result, that causes an early stop codon in mRNA and destruction of neurons in the brain. So this gene is to do with the idea of building neurons. So this gene has been mutated that helps to build the neurons. And as a result, you get neuron degradation as a result. Now, remember this idea when we looked at gene expression of stop codons. A start codon tells the ribosome to start building a protein. A stop codon tells a uh, ribosome to stop building a proton. If this protein, uh, if the stop codon comes in early, that protein is going to be shorter. If it's got shorter, it's got different amino acids. Different amino acids means different shape, means probably not working, most likely not working. It, the next example of a point mutation is deletion. Again, it does what it says on the tin. One of the amino acids is just deleted out of uh, the gene. So if you look at the top one, it starts ACTG. That would be, again, your normal strand. That second one below it, it goes ACTC. So that G is no longer there. It is just being deleted completely out of the sequence. And again, useful to know an example of this, a common example is cystic fibrosis. So it's a respiratory disease. Mm -hmm. yes? It's a respiratory disease. Uh, so it affects the lungs and various other parts of your digestive tract as well. 
um, but this is caused by a deletion and again it is it's not completely fatal instantly but it is pretty life affecting and it will usually be the thing that causes the people who have it to die from that. Is it that tends right? to cause sterility as well particularly in males it tends to mean that the, they don't produce bi viable sperm um, most not most there's something like a one in 20 people in the world are carrying one copy of the mutated cystic fibrosis gene but the idea is it's recessive so you've got a second copy that's keeping you safe um, so cystic fibrosis affects oh I think the statistic is one one in 10,000, but I'm probably completely wrong with that mm. uh, in terms of people. And there is different severities of it. It's, it's a spectrum. So there are people who've got fairly mild symptoms of cystic fibrosis can expect to live to 60, 70 years of age, whereas quite severe cystic fibrosis, um, life expectation might be up to 21 years old. OK, so this is just a little summary of point mutations. So the idea is in deletion, a nucleotide is removed. Try to avoid using that word base from now on. Um, and then it causes this idea of frame shift, which we'll have a look at in a second. OK, then we've got um, insertion, which also inserts a nucleotide. And that causes something called frame shift as well. Is this just recycle through deletion over and yeah. over? Yep, it's just recycling through deletion. OK. Why is this slide appearing again? I don't know. You made it. <laughs> oh, well. OK, um, both insertion and deletion mutations can cause severe effects on the bodies uh, because they both change the reading frame for codons. Now, if you remember, the idea is mRNA needs to be read in triplets in groups of three. Now, mRNA is a copy of DNA, OK, meaning if you've got one extra nucleotide, every nucle every codon that you read after that point is going to be different. It's going to shift the reading frame for that particular protein. Equally, if you've got a deletion mutation, the idea is all of the letters move one place over, meaning that the reading frame, again, entirely shifts for the codon. And what this can have, mean is the, the protein that's produced at the end can be entirely different. So insertion and, muta and deletion mutations can lead to the frame shift effect. Now, there's no such thing in the world as a frame shift mutation. OK, it's not a thing. The idea is. If an insertion happens, you get frame shift effect. If a deletion happens, you get frame shift effect. OK, now there's an example on the next slide of what that means. OK, so this is the example of an insertion one. So in this case, there is an insertion of a G base. So if you compare the top line of nucleotides to the bottom line, there is a G put in towards seventh from the end. Um, and where the as black arrow is. Pretty much where the black arrow is. <laughs> um, and as you can see as a result of it, the amino acids that are being coded for after where that base has been added are different to the original DNA strand. So the original DNA strand ends in serine and arginine. And then the new one, because of this insertion of a G, there's now valine and alanine, mm -hmm. which again, completely different amino acids. And as a result of this, that is a completely different protein that is now being made because of that one base being inserted there, everything after it has had that knock-on effect. So everything after it has been read slightly differently, resulting in a totally different protein in the end. I remember most proteins will be thousands of amino acids long. Uh, you will not get really a, a peptide chain that's only five or six amino acids long. So the idea is it's not just those two amino acids that are being affected at this stage. It's all the other ones that would come after that. Deletion frame shift effect. So we've got a deletion of a T base, okay, at the point where the black arrow is, and this causes all the following codons mm. to be different, mm -hmm. which results in different amino acids. So on the top row, we've got the amino acids that we should have of acin, cis, ter, ala, sir, arg. I'm not going to go through their full names there, okay? So that's what we're supposed to have, but the deletion mutation instead causes everything after to shift one place to the left. And as a result of that, we're getting a completely different set of amino acids going as and cis, thir, arg, arg. And then we've got G and T as nucleotides sitting left over at the end. OK, mm -hmm. now, again, that results in different amino acids, which will be a different shape of a protein, very likely a non-functioning protein as a result of that. OK, so this idea, again, that insertion and deletion can cause frame shift effect, which usually has a big effect on the, the, the shape of the protein. 
and I've now just seen the black arrow that points to the, the base well change. Uh -huh. I was looking at the arrow above it last well, time because the arrow above it is black. I didn't understand why you said, oh, our near picture, the black arrow. It's like, picture, it's exactly opposite the black our arrow. Our picture was over it. I know, but I brought it down so you could see After it. After I had said it. Uh-huh. Uh, right, substitution is different, okay? It is not frame shift, okay? It doesn't have any kind of frame shift fit, but it is the third type of point mutation. So we've looked at insertion, we've looked at deletion. The third one is substitution. Miss Armstrong. Okay. Substitution, again, does what it says in the tin. It's like when you have a sub and a sport, you swap one player for another player. In this case, we swap one base for another base. So if you look at that top strand, uh, when we get to the middle, it reads GTA, and then there's been a substitution. So in that bottom strand after the mutation, it now reads GT, GTG. So all that's happened is that A has been swapped for a G. Nice and straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an example of substitution. This is the common example. This is the example that, to be honest, links to a lot of different mutations, but is a good example of substitution, which is sickle cell anemia. And it is caused by the substitution of an adenine nucleotide to a thymine nucleotide, which then changes the codon from one amino acid, which is glutamic amino acid, uh, or glutamic acid, uh, to a valine, which, again, one, of, one amino acid has now changed, which will result in a slightly different protein, and it actually has an effect on the shape of red blood cells. You're used to seeing red blood cells as that kind of nice circular biconcave shape, but then when you have sickle cell anemia, that's not the same. It results more kind of almost like a kind of crescent moon shape, and it doesn't have the same uh, surface area, which results in ineffective transportation of oxygen, which obviously affects respiration. It affects all the different things going on in your body that require any kind of oxygen. So sickle cell anemia really serious illness caused by the substitution of one base resulting in one amino acid changing, not frame shift. Luckily with sickle cell anemia, you do still get some sort of red blood cell. If the, if the mutation was all that different, you'd have no red blood cells and well, you wouldn't even be born with that because you'd have no way of transporting oxygen around your body. Um, so you do get some functioning. People with sickle cell anemia quite often need blood transfusions in order to help along with other drugs uh, to help carry oxygen around their body. But on the bright side, they don't get malaria. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a natural defence against malaria. That's something you might want to look into. Yeah, if your choice is sickle cell anemia or malaria, <laughs> it's, a, it's a close one sometimes. It's like That's why a lot of people in Africa who have sickle cell anemia are then immune malaria. from malaria, which is obviously a, a large killer there. Mm. Right, so that's it. To summarise, so the idea is you need to know your three point mutations. So you've got insertion, which is an extra nucleotide can cause a frame shift changing multiple amino acids. Deletion, which is when a nucleotide or multiple nucleotides are deleted. And this again causes a frame shift. And then substitution, which is one nucleotide swapped out for another. Not frame shift. Not frame shift. OK, uh, so that's the first part of this. The next section will be focusing on then what happens to the protein because the bases are different.